so one of the things that you that you really stress is being able to feel and it's so hard when people are in pain to turn towards that can you talk about that a little bit how do you encourage people or I mean, I think part of we, we're encouraged because when we try it, it works, we feel better. Mm -hmm. but you get to that where that's just what you want to do. You want to go in and, and feel what's here. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm doing a lot of psychoeducation with people and um, particularly about um, the need to grieve, the need to have. So I say there's two other key um, relational developmental arrests in terms of the developmental trauma disorder. One is the um, arrested self-protection, which is based in healthy anger. This mm -hmm. one, and one of the first things a kid, kids are really fine tuned to see fairness. And I think because fairness is a fundamental part of intimacy. To the degree that we treat each other as equals, to the degree that I'm as interested in you as you are in me to the degree that we each have a vote on what we're going to do, what we're going to choose. Um, and then to the degree that we uh, welcome the whole other person to be there, we're not going to be unfair and expect them to be up all the time because that's impossible. Right. Mm -hmm. um, to that degree, uh, have we um, gotten our, sense of uh, self-compassion back and relational compassion back. And so I'm preaching a lot about self-compassion and this idea of the addictions, the, the being stuck in the four Fs, being stuck in negative noticing um, creates more pain. It's just less, it's, it's, a, it's a more lingering, ongoing pain that you've kind of gotten used to, but it's causing all these deficits in your life. And that there's a way to move through a lot of that. And that's through grieving. Grieving lets the pain come out in the way, through these mechanisms that are part of our true nature. And when we can give that to each other, when we have a cry together, or I make you feel safe enough, you could have a good cry. Because I've seen the same thing with my clients. They come in, they're just full of worry. And I finally, we finally got to the place where, hey, your critics really butt, bumming you out for this. and seems to me like, well, yeah, it is hard. And maybe you can kind of drop down and try and feel what's going on in your body. And bring your awareness into your, into your belly. And when we get into that level, we could cry. And oh my God, we, we just should shift into, oh, you know, it's kind of a nice day. I, like, I saw this really nice movie last night. And, right. And, mm -hmm. We can't really access that when we're blocking everything off. We block off all the good stuff too. Yes, yeah. that's, that's right. Yeah. So I I love how you work on all these different levels. So it is important to understand in our cognitive mind, and then we also need to work in the body. Yes, yes. Yeah. You can only go so far with the cognitive. Right. And that's why I'm I'm trying to empower the cognitive work with the emotional tools of using the healthy anger. Mm -hmm. And that gets you down in your anger, uh, anger to protect yourself and using the healthy tears to feel, to cry for yourself, to cry for the terrible losses you have. It's a death. You know, Kubler-Ross, his idea that you get over the death of someone you love by having crying and, and angry. Well, there's right. all kinds of death. And the death of having a positive relationship with yourself is one of the, just one of the worst. Welcome to the 2021 Radical Recovery Summit, presented by the Killaby Center for Recovery. This is Lynn Fraser, your moderator. This year, our theme is Feel It, Heal It, a new paradigm of recovery, featuring a diverse group of thought leaders and innovators, people who are working on the ground in the new field of addiction recovery. Go to RadicalRecoverySummit.com to sign up and watch free.